Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, we're just going to have a quick church today. It's not going to be a long message, I don't think, um, but it's a great verse, so I just want to unpack it. Uh, and a few things just to thank God, uh, to praise God for, it, so hopefully to, to encourage you guys in your walks and your faith, things that God's been doing for us lately. Um, I think it's really cool. It's worth sharing. Um, so we'll start with prayer. God, thank you for this time that we have. I pray that you will teach us and bless us, God, that our roots go deep into you and we grow in all things to the fullness of the stature of Christ, God, being all things to all men. I pray that that whatever you have to speak to us, you will. I pray that you'll just open our hearts and our eyes and our ears to you and, and to what you have to say in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so Psalm 145, verse 18. Um, it says, The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. I love that verse. So two halves to it. First off, the Lord is nigh to all them that call upon him. And you think James 4, 8, where it says, Draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh unto you. That God... Oftentimes we're waiting for God to do something great in our life in order for us to feel like we're justified or, or that we should draw near to God. And you don't realize that if we just take a step back and stop looking at your own situations, like, wow, why didn't you do this? Why is this happening? Why haven't you come through here? Stop, stop, stop. Take a step back and look at what God's done for you. He gave us Jesus, the most important thing. That's God's God saying, I love you, right, through the cross. He gave us Jesus Christ to pay for everything that we've done so that we can have eternal life and be redeemed and forgiven and set free from sin and spend eternity with him. Okay, he gave us, and, and not only that, but to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to operate in the Spirit. And so there's so much stuff to thank God for. And God gives the rain to the godly and ungodly alike, the rain and the sun. He gives He gives to all. There's so much that God's given you and done for you. And even just having life itself is a gift and a blessing. And so if we're if we're not focusing on on those things that God's done for us, the things that like all just the stuff that we take for granted or we ignore, then it's going to be hard to feel like you should look to God. So start looking at what God's done for you, and then respond and just draw near to God. And it says the Lord is nigh to all them that call upon Him. So when you call upon God, He's there. He's He's waiting for you. He's just waiting for you to respond to what He's already done. Um, and God put on my heart a couple nights ago. I was just praying before bed. He really put on my heart how strongly. God desires intimacy with us, spiritual intimacy with us. Okay, we're not just saved for the sake of salvation. We're saved so we can know him and be transformed. And that happens through our intimate walk with God. Now you think that, I've said so, so many times, that God creates parallels in the natural to teach us about the spiritual. And God's created parallels. Like for example, uh, we're the, collectively as the church, we're the bride of Christ. He's the groom, he's the, he's the man, and the church is, is the bride uh, for Jesus. And that's us. And you think that God uses earthly marriage terms to, to illustrate to us what, well, not just because it's, it's, it's what's happening. We're going to be in, in union and in covenant with God. Um, but also, God created a healthy marriage, a healthy relationship. A husband and a wife should have a desire for each other, a desire for intimacy. And likewise, God has a desire for us, and we're, we're supposed to have a desire for him for spiritual intimacy. He's trying to teach us through things in life what it's like for him with us. Um, and when you have that spiritual intimacy with God, that's when God's able to birth things in you. He'll put revelation, ideas, he'll show you stuff, and, and it births something new in you. It changes who you are inside. And then you feed that, and you protect it, and you, and, you, and you help it as it develops and it grows. And in due time, you'll start bearing it outwardly towards other people. You'll birth it, so to speak. Um, and if you, got, if you want God to transform you, to birth things in you, to do new things in you, you need to spend that intimate time with God. He desires it. He desires it so much. He doesn't force it. He doesn't obligate it. He doesn't mandate or require or, or push for it or anything. He's just waiting. He really, really desires, but he waits for us to be ready because God is love and love never demands its own way. And he never forces himself on you. He's, he's always waiting for you to come to him. And, and likewise, there's parallels there for the natural as well um, within marriages. But also, uh, yeah, just that God desires that intimacy. And when we, when we're, when, when we realize and we, we draw near to God, he's, he's right there. He's ready to draw near to us. Um, the second half of that verse, God is near to all them that call upon him in truth. And that's the important thing is we're not supposed to call upon God in our own way or or whatever we think is right. We're supposed to call upon God in truth. Now in John 14, 6, Jesus says that he is the truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through him. He says he is the truth. Jesus is the truth. He's the word made flesh. He is the truth. John 17, 17, Jesus was praying to God for his disciples. And he said, um, sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. So God's word, scripture is truth. And Jesus is truth. And then in John 16, 13, um, oh, I'll read it. It's a really cool verse. I, I I don't want to say it wrong. John 16, 13 says, How be it when he, he's speaking to his disciples here, Jesus is talking to his disciples. He says, When he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. So the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. You have the word made flesh, he is Jesus, he is the truth. You have the word, thy word is truth, and you have the spirit of truth, who leads you into all truth. So between Jesus, the word, and the Holy Spirit who's in us, 
we're we're set, right? Eight, Romans eight fourteen. I've said this before. I always say eight sixteen or eight seventeen. I don't know why. It's Romans eight fourteen says that as many as are led of the Spirit of God are the sons of God. We're called to be led of the Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, who leads us into all truth. If you're led of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will lead you into truth. So, um. Yeah, call upon God in truth. Truth of scripture, truth of Jesus, truth that the Holy Spirit leads you in. And none of those will contradict each other. They always work together in unison. Um, so if you're ever unsure, especially as you're first learning or, or walking into something that's new, always compare it to scripture. Get to know scripture so you don't make mistakes, so you're not fooled. Um, the truth keeps you tethered so you don't fly away or wander off. When you are when you know the truth, it grounds you and it, it keeps you stable. And when you know the truth, you can't be deceived. If somebody, if you know the truth about, a, a, say, some manipulators coming around, um, like, a, like back in the day when, when when people used to pay with cash. I used to work retail in lots of different jobs. And sometimes you would have quick change artists that would come through. So what they would do is they 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 pay for something with a $20 bill, say it was 10 bucks, and you give them a $10 bill back in their change. They would say, oh, wait, can I have two fives? And then you get them two fives. Like, oh, wait, can I have uh, two toonies and a loony instead of the five? And then, then they go back and forth. And then they're like, oh, wait, I have a 20 here. Why don't I just give you that? And you give me a 50. And then and then the, the, they, they get you so confused and flustered. The next thing you know, at the end of it, you think you've settled at all, but you're still confused. They walk out the door and then you realize you're 50 bucks short after like a minute of them doing that. And they do that. That happened to me once when I was first learning, um, like when I was first working on cash in, in, in one of my old jobs. And I've seen it happen to people too. And it's sad. And once you, once you know that, if someone ever starts doing that, you shut them down right away and say, no, this is your change. Take and leave. I'm not, I'm not falling for that crap. When you know the truth, you're not going to be deceived unless you're willing to be deceived. But when you know the truth, it tethers you and it keeps from being deceived. So get in the word, get in truth. I feel like that's just really important for you guys. Um, Get grounded in Jesus and led of the Holy Spirit and in the Word of God. And again, they will, all three of those will agree in, as one and, and be led in truth and call upon God in truth of who he is. Jesus says, John 4, 23, he's speaking to the woman at the well in Samaria. And he says, um, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him. Not they should worship, but they must worship in spirit and in truth. Your spirit has to be engaged. It's not just a ritual or, or a religion or some dry thing that you go through. That's not going to do anything for you, okay? Like structure can be important, but structure is also a trap because it makes you comfortable and then you you stop trying and then you just get into this routine. And the next thing you know, you have a religion or a ritual and you don't actually have your heart in it anymore. But structure, like discipline is important for success. You need to have a balance. There's so many things in life you need a balance for. Without structure, you, without discipline, um, then it's, it's easy to get sidetracked, just delayed, put things in the back burner, and then you don't have success. Anyone who's successful in business, in sports, in anything in life, um, they're, they're always disciplined people. Almost The most successful people out there, a lot of them, like uh, I've said this before, but the top, I think with the top 500 um, wealthiest people in America, the, like two thirds of them had either military and or martial arts um, training in their background, in their, in their, in their past. And that's, they're learning discipline. That's a key part of why so many of them are successful. They're learning discipline and structure. And, and there's a whole lot you can unpack there. I'm not going to go too far in that, but, uh, Romans 4.23, those that God is spirit, sorry, John 4.23, um, that God is spirit and all those who call upon him must call upon him in spirit and in truth. We have to we have to acknowledge who God is to know and understand and acknowledge who God is and respond to the truth. We're not responding to our idea of Jesus. We're responding to who Jesus is. And the scripture reveals that the Holy Spirit will reveal it. And the more you get to know God and grow in God, um, you'll understand more who Jesus is. Um, but yeah, God is always near when we call and we need to call upon him in truth, guys. So I just want to encourage you in that, that if you're feeling distant from God, just turn to him. Go back to him. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him to all that call upon him in truth. He's wants, he wants sincerity and he wants he, he wants us to desire him and to, and, to, and to come to him and to have that, draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh to you. He wants that intimacy with you. Make time. Ask God to show you the opportunities that are there through the day that you can just take time, even two minutes to go spend time with God and, and, um, and just in prayer and to learn to pray without ceasing, to always be talking with him and then to be intentional as well and to make times through the day. Like I, I again, don't want to get into a ritual, but um, but just to have, have discipline, like every morning I'm going to sit with God, I'm going to pray, I'm going to read scripture, I'm going to worship God. When you're driving in your car, when you're on your breaks at work, before bed, whatever it is, just always through the day, pray without ceasing and, and spend time with God and draw near to him. Because when you do, he, I promise you he's there. If you feel like, oh, he's turned his back on me, then you're going to cut yourself off from God. He's not cutting you off. That's important for, for some of you guys. Just he's, he's not cutting you off. He's always there. And if you real, if you ever feel that way, just say, no, the truth is that he is near to anyone who calls on him. I'm turning back to him. He's not, he's not, tra- like, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to share it now that turns, right? If, if you do something that you think offended God or that, that God doesn't want, he doesn't do this. He doesn't just like, 
turn around and just like he, he he's, he's still there he wants you like as a parent as a good parent to your kids you're like okay i wasn't happy you did that but come to me let's make this right and let me teach you and just and and, and restore the relationship and that's what god wants for us so um yeah i hope that that encouraged you guys that it helps um the lord is not nigh to all them that call upon him to all that call upon him in truth uh very very important verse so that wasn't a very long message, but I think it's a really important one. It's something just to dwell on. Psalm 145, 18. Go read it, meditate on it, pray over it, and ask God to show you anything else you need to see. Um, I also want to share a few things that God's done. Just uh, one thing, just last night, or two nights ago maybe, um, I was talking to Anya, and we were talking about bearing fruit at, like spiritually. And, and at one point, I, I just for some reason, I said, you know, a tree bears fruit whether anyone eats it or not. And... She freaked out. She's like, no way. God just told me that literally last night, like the exact same thing, the, the tree bears fruit. So it was kind of a cool confirmation, I think, from God. Um, the trees bear fruit whether anyone eats it or not. And I have, we live right by a forest. And on the edge of the tree line by our, our, our yard or field, um, there's a wild apple tree growing. We just found it this year. And somehow we didn't notice it the previous years because it's kind of tucked away in there. But somebody or an animal at some point dropped an apple seed there and it grew. Now that tree is bearing fruit whether anybody eats it or not. Whether, like, I'm sure deers come through and eat it, but even if animals don't eat it, even if people don't eat it, it's still bearing fruit. It's doing what God made it to do. And we're called to bear fruit for God, whether anyone eats it or not. Your bearing fruit is is what your, what our, say our mandate or our, our call is. And, and if other people accept it, if other people want to eat it, that's up to them. You're not here to make them eat it. You're not responsible for what they do with it. You're just responsible to bear it and to be faithful to, to what God made you to do. They are responsible for whether or not they take it. And there's seeds in fruit. It's one of the reasons why God used fruit as an analogy is that vegetables, like you learn as a kid, that vegetables bear fruit uh, seeds on the outside and fruit bears seed on the inside. And whenever someone takes fruit and eats it, you eat a blueberry, you're eating the seeds, right? Like there's so many fruits that you eat the seeds of. And seeds generally have great nutrient value. They're often antiparasitic, anti-cancer, antiviral, antibacterial. Like there's a lot of great medicinal, therapeutic, uh, detoxifying benefits of seeds as well. Um, but... Anyways, when you eat fruit, you're getting seeds, and we're called to bear fruit. So if so, if you bear fruit to somebody and they accept, it, like like whatever you're doing, and you're in, in, like just for God, you're bearing fruit in some spiritual way, and and somebody's receiving that, you're planting seeds in them at the same time, and and not every seed grows. When you if you have gardening, you know that not every seed you plant grows, but some of them will, and that's that's the whole point. You're, you're the kingdom of God is like a man who goes out and sows seed. Remember when Jesus gave the parable of the sower and the seeds. Not every not every one of those seeds grew, and even the ones that did grow, not all of them bore, bore fruit. But the ones that landed on good soil did bear fruit, 30, 60, or 100 times as much has been planted. So that's our calling is to bear fruit whether someone eats it or not. That's that's up to them. Don't worry outwardly if people aren't responding the way you hoped or wanted. Like pray for it and, and, and encourage it, persuade, like do we're called to we're called to do this. But um at the end of the day, excuse me, at the end of the day, it's up to them to eat it. It's your job just to bear the fruit bear the fruit, be faithful, and, and to do it cheerfully and with love. Um, also, just as, as kind of like a praise report, I guess, just to encourage you guys in your faith, and, and if you have any cool experiences, you please share them with us, call, text, whatever, um, email us. But we had our last litter of puppies because we sell, we breed dogs. And if you guys have been following what I've been saying, it took about seven months because it's been a bad market. It's been seven months to sell all 10 of those pups. It was a big litter. And we finally sold the last one last week, last Sunday, a week ago. And God told us that they would sell. And he did. He came through and, and they all sold. It wasn't the time frame we were hoping or expecting, but we knew that God would do it. Didn't give up faith and God sold them all. And that same day that we sold the last one, we had our next litter of puppies. And you may say, you're crazy. Why are you doing that after a bad experience? Well, we know that God orchestrated this. He's called us to it. We're not giving up. And for months, for probably it's like five months, maybe, I don't know, we've been following prophetic word channel. They just, they get prophetic words. And it's not, it's not just like randomized things that could apply to anybody. It's not like a, I don't want to, I don't know how to say it. It's not like a fortune cookie or anything, but they're very specific prophetic words. And, and some of them, a lot, so a lot of them, like, I don't, I, my, I don't feel God saying to go there or it doesn't resonate with me, but there's a few that you listen to them and you're like, or you just know right away when you see it, like, this is something that God wants me to listen to. And as you're listening, you know that God's confirming to you that this is what he's doing. This is what he's up to right now. This is where you're going to go in the future and, and what he's doing. And I've, I've, I've mentioned this before a few times and one of the one of the themes of all these prophetic words that God was really speaking and confirming to us is that soon, which is with the season we're walking into now, the season we were in before where everything was hard and it was just a, like a, a long struggle, like a, like a uh, it was just like it was like you're just uh, this opposition at every turn and it just it wouldn't relent and it was just one thing after another after another and it was just it was it felt like you were like stretched as thin as you could go <laughs> like like you're just right, ready to break but by God's grace you were going through it 
And God just kept saying, like, that season's going to end. You're going to walk in, and very quickly it's going to shift, and it's going to become the season of of reward, of recompense, of restitution, restoration, et cetera, et cetera, like of blessing, of God just overflowing and abundant, d- despite whatever's going on in the world. It's just, and despite how it looks in the natural, God is going to do this. It's going to, it's going to be a shift. And, and we, we just, we believe that we know it and not because we want to believe it's because we know in our spirits is right. And I, I want, I want what God has for us. And, and it's, we've been feeling that shift coming now that, that, that season we were in is just, it's, it's ta- tailing off and now we're going into the, into the new season. So we had this new litter of puppies last week. It took, it took, uh, seven months, I think roughly six and a half, seven months to sell those last 10 pups. This litter had seven pups in it and we only have two left to sell in one week. Five of them are spoken for. Five are already already good to go. We only have two left to sell. God's just been bringing all these people and every single person who's contacted is buying. Back in the last litter, we had dozens and dozens and dozens of people contacting. It looked promising and then it would fall through and, and one thing after another. But now we're just, we're seeing, we knew that God was going to do this and now he's doing it. And we've literally only got two of seven left to sell in the first week. Like oh, that's super encouraging. And we have, we've sold two pups from future layers. People are saying it's not a good time for a dog now, but we want to put a deposit down for future because we like, we like the kinds of dogs we have. So, um, we had nine, essentially nine dogs spoken for in a week. That's amazing. I mean, I, I just want to praise God. Thank God for that. that this is what he's doing. It's only the beginning. He's going to do more. He's going to do more. Um, <clears throat> also, uh, a lot of Elijah, our, 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 our three-year-old, he was, really sick and um all our kids got the sniffles about a week ago and it's something that i guess we're learning I, i've never really been scared our kids get the sniffles or get sick it's not a big deal but i'm learning we're learning now just not even to tolerate that just to to, to command it out to, to to stand in faith and kick it out um and we didn't and all our kids got better except except for a three-year-old and it ended up hitting him kind of hard and so it became like a chest infection. I'm pretty sure it was RSV. It's a virus that's been going around lately. And generally, it's really benign. And almost everyone in their life gets it, usually when you're like a baby or a toddler. Um, but but it hit him really hard. And and I'd be honest, like our faith is just, it's hard sometimes when you're seeing things in the natural, it's hard to have faith. And so our faith was like, it was up and down. Like there was like times where our faith was strong, times where it faltered. And, but God's grace saw us through that whole time. It was like, it was like, he wouldn't sleep. He was struggling, breathing and, and it's just so much going on and you're worried, you're concerned and, and you know, worry about nothing, pray about everything I'm trying to, but it's just, sometimes it gets a little overwhelming. Like and if it hits you off guard and you weren't expecting it and you weren't sort of prepared in the spirit, um, it can just, it can kind of like knock you down. And, but God, just his grace through the whole time, we, we were carrying him and he's like 30 pounds, like over 30, probably almost 15 kilos for Stefan Jet. Um, and, he, and we're carrying him like 24-7 almost and through the nights, barely sleeping. And I did this for a couple of days. And on top of our, our other baby and, and the puppies and life in general and all our kids and everything we had to do. And but God gave us grace. It was no complaint, no arguing, no nothing. We just we just went through it. And it was just, we were just with peace and with, with love. And we just um, we just did everything we had to do. And, and it was God's grace. It was amazing seeing God see us through it. And we didn't have the faith to see him healed. But we asked Steph and Jet, um, you guys are amazing. Thank you um to pray for him and you guys like instantly just went to prayer and you kept praying and praying and praying until until you felt it shift and literally when you felt it shift and, and you're talking to Anya when you let it when you felt it shift that's when he started getting better and so we know it was God a hundred percent it was God and we thank God that you guys were there and and um just praying over the situation and just 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 standing interceding for us um, and it was God's power. Ultimately, it was God. Give God the glory. God's the one. But I just also want to thank um, you guys just for praying. And just to encourage you guys to pray. Don't don't give up. Get yourself. Always be prepared because you never know. The enemy's always going to come when you're beat down, worn up. Like, just like when, you, when you're vulnerable. That's when the enemy attacks you. Um, that's when, well, that's when they attack you the most because that's that they know that you're, you're more vulnerable then. And <clears throat> so guard your heart. Pray for one another. Pray for and intercede for one another, and and um, stand in faith because God does come through. God told Anya and I both that He would get through the illness, even though in the natural it looked pretty bad. Um, but God told us both that He would come through, and He ended up doing. He did it, just as God said. So we're really thankful, God. Thank you so much for that. And um, last thing, a mailman. There's a new mailman here. I pulled into the the mailbox up like 30 seconds up the road for me just to grab some newspapers. I don't read the newspaper here, but I use it for starting fires. Pretty much everyone here gets the newspaper just for starting fires. Um, um, but anyways, I'm sorry if you happen, if, if you see this and you work for that paper, I'm sorry. But um, um, anyways, there was a new mailman there and I just said, hi, introduced myself. And, and he was just saying how he was, he was really happy, really optimistic, positive guy, but he's saying he was really stressed. It was a new route. It was a lot to get used to and to learn. 
and I felt my heart pray for him, pray for him. And I, and I just, I was like, Oh, it was like one of those moments where you just like, you kind of wrestle with it and then it gets awkward and then you don't do it. And so I was driving back home just, and as I, it was only 30 seconds up the road, but at, the longer I drove, I felt worse and worse. Like the heart, it was just, the Holy spirit was really convicting me. And I talked about this two, like two weeks ago. Um, the Holy spirit doesn't not bring condemnation, but conviction. And I just felt my heart like, God, do I got to go back? I got to go back. And I was like, I could pray for him from home. And I was like, but it's not the same. Like he needs to see God in action. He needs to see somebody praying. And, and, and then it came to my mind that just a few weeks ago, I preached on, on, on um, if you're not faithful with the little things, God won't trust you with the bigger things. If he is, is faithful with that which is least, we'll be faithful with more. And if you want God to bring you into something greater, you got to start being faithful with the little stuff. And that's true for pretty much everything in life. But in this case, I just, I felt like, oh, I've got to go back. And I was like preaching to myself then. So if you're calling my sermon, so I was like, fine, fine. It's the Holy Spirit. So I turned around. And I right up the corner of my house and I turned around and went back and he was still there. So I got out. I was like, dude, can I pray for you? And he's like, yeah, sure. And I, I, I prayed for him and he seemed really thankful. And I saw him later and he said hi. And so I like I, everything's cool. Even if he was upset, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't care. I'm doing what God, I want to do what God said. Um, but I want to encourage you guys, just take those small steps. Take those small steps. On you had another situation like that recently. There's a lady in a grocery store. She saw that she felt like I need to pray for her hip. Cause she had a bit of a limp and, and on you kind of like, ah, she talked herself out of it. And then she promised God, if I see her again, I promise I'll pray for her. And then a few months later, just this week, um, she was in the grocery store. She saw her again. So she was like, I'm going for it. So she just went and she prayed for her. And it's just being faithful to what God said, be faithful to what God said. Cause you know, even if people don't respond the way you, that you would hope, you're still planting a seed. There's a lot of times people just because of their pride or, or, or frustration or anger with God or whatever, that they may not respond positively. It doesn't mean that they're, they're not being impacted or you're not planting a seed in them. They might go home that night and think about it and it hits them. And then they, they, they repent and give their heart to God. Like you don't know, you know, like you have no idea of the little ways that, that, that the smallest things that you can do for people can end up having a, a great impact on them. Um, yeah. But God's always there. Even when, even when your faith falls, just like I was saying, like when our kid was sick, um, even just our neighbor, our car's in the shop, it's taking longer. Um, the guy, the guy's overwhelmed because he has so much work to do at the shop, but our car is just getting a, a, a small repair. Well, it's not a big repair, but it's taking, a, it's taking a while. Um, and we didn't have a vehicle. And when I had to take my kid into the hospital, um, I'm not against hospitals. I believe if we have the faith that Jesus calls us to, we'll never need a hospital. But if your faith isn't where it should be and, and you pray and get other people to pray too, but there are, there's a time and a place for a hospital. Okay. I'm not against modern medical advancements. Um, I think we, we overdo a lot of stuff and there's a lot that's not necessary, but, um, but we're also called to faith. But anyways, in this situation, I felt like I got to take him in. So I had to take him in. I didn't have a car, but our neighbor, um, his son was up for the week to, to go hunting and, and, uh, he, he was just like, Hey, take my car. It's, it's there. And actually two years ago, our car was getting repaired and it was he, the same guy lent us his car that time. Um, so he's like, didn't I lend it to you before? I was like, yeah, yeah, that was, that was kind of a, a theme now. But anyways, really thankful he did because then uh, like a day, like that, that night or the next day, we ended up needing it to get into the hospital. So God provided in advance just for, because he knew it was going to come, right? Um, but anyways, just, I want to give glory to God that he orchestrates everything. He helps us through, he knows our infirmities, he knows our weaknesses. Um, and he just, he calls us to just focus on him, get it with him, get, draw an eye unto God. And, and he will draw down to you, right? And he's not all of the, all of the call upon him. Um, so anyways, I hope this is an encouragement to you guys. Um, all the stuff that, that, that I was just sharing that God's been doing for us lately, just the way he comes through, like he says he will. He's always faithful. His word does not return to him void. Whatever he says is um, he, that which he has spoken is that which he's able to perform. He will always do it. He will always come through for you guys. And remember that verse, Psalm 145, 18, the Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. I hope that that's an encouragement to you guys. Dive into that. Uh, we'll just pray and close up and, and um, I guess I'll see you guys next week. But thank you for joining. So God, thank you so much for this time that we had. I pray that it will be blessed. I pray that you will speak to everyone that, that, that the things that you need them to hear. And um, I just pray, God, that your will be done on the earth, in our life, in the church, God, and that we will continue to grow in you, that we will draw nigh unto you and call on you in truth. In Jesus' name, thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're with us, that you're the spirit of truth. Please lead us into all truth, and I pray that we will have the, the spiritual intimacy and that spiritual long time with you, God, just to let you teach us and change us and grow us and potter us and, and prune us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining, guys. Uh, God bless you guys, and I'll see you guys next week.